future, maybe, hopefully. Yeah, thank you very much for the kind introduction and thank you very much, Professor Berger and his team, uh, to be a part of the panel, which is really a, a great uh, honor, honor for me. So, so now we come to, to the easy part, you know, we come now to, to, to xenotransplantation. And the problem is, uh, these are my disclosures. <laughs> <laughs> There is a, is a huge unmet need of, uh, of, 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 of donor hearts, and I just put here the estimates for Europe. So, you know, considering uh, 15, uh, 15 uh, million people in Europe suffering from, from heart failure, you know, if you just take all below uh, 75, which have no contraindication to, to, to heart transplantation and, and, and really look to the end-stage heart failure patients, uh, you can estimate that we would have 100 to 200,000 people, uh, you know, actually needing a heart transplantation. So what we are currently doing, according uh, to, to the constraints with, 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 with donor hearts, we are just transplanting only the tip of the iceberg, and here are the numbers for, for, for Germany, for, for all the organs, so there are certainly a lot of people who could benefit from an organ transplantation. Only a part of them qualify for a waiting list. There are currently 900, 5,000 people in Germany waiting for an organ transplant. Only a third of them receives actually transplanted. And the sad thing here is that every day three patients die while waiting for a transplant. Um, yes, it makes here something with, with, with the internet. Um, I, sorry. So the, the, the current uh, waiting, uh, waiting list mortality is, is, is 20% uh, uh, on, 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 the, on the waiting list, and this is very constant for, for heart transplantation over the years. The most intriguing fact here uh, is that not the people waiting on the high urgency list are, are, are dying on the, on, on the waiting list. Those are in our hospitals, in the ICUs, we can put in, uh, in, in a red. No, the, the, the T-listed, the electively listed patients are dying and we have actually no option for them. So it would be really nice to have an unlimited supply of organs to, to treat all these patients. And already Alexis Carell, uh, you know, it, it was a very visionary surgeon uh, who received the Nobel Prize in, in uh, 19, 1912, said in, in, in 19, 1907, so the, the, the future of, of any tra organ transplantation would rely on the feasibility of what he called heterotransplantation we would say xenotransplantation, so transplantation from one species to another. Um, the obvious advantages of xenotransplantation is the unlimited organ supply, of course. We could schedule surgery electively, that would be fine. Uh, uh, every surgeon would, would, would like this. No coagulation, anticoagulation, probably, and the independence of an energy, uh, energy source. You know, yesterday we discussed this problem with the dry flies infection, so that would not be a problem in xenotransplantation. As already uh, 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 Dr. Schubert uh, mentioned, xenotransplantation has been tried in, in, in history. Actually, the first uh, transplantation, heart transplantation, in, uh, in, in men was, was performed in 1967 by Hardy in Jackson, Mississippi. He transplanted a, a, a heart of a, 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 chimpanzees, a Chimpanzee's heart uh, to a patient. The heart was obviously too small uh, to, uh, to uh, uh, keep up the, 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 the circulation, so it was not successful. Overall, there were, have been uh, 10 uh, attempts and the survival rates were, were uh, up to 20 days. And this was probably the most prominent case which went through the, uh, through the press. This is this case of, of baby, uh, baby Faye, uh, which has been transplanted by, by, by Bailey in, in, in Loma Linda. And uh, this child um, uh, died after receiving a baboon heart 20 days after transplantation due to acute humor rejection. 
Um, Randall Morris, which is a very prominent uh, immunologist from Stanford, said there are three golden roads for achieving successful xeno heart transplantation, and he also said um, how it can be done. <laughs> um, the pick for, for many reasons would be a, a, a very desirable source of uh, organs for, 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 for xeno transplantation, but here are we are right in the middle of the problem. Pigs are expressing uh, alpha-gal uh, epitope, uh, you know, which is not present in, in humans because we lost the capability to, to build this epitope over evolution. But on the other hand, and this, you know, really comes in line with, with, with a, a talk you just heard from, from Dr. Dr. Urschel, we have natural antibodies against this uh, gal epitope. So if you in the presence of natural antibodies, which are uh, ubiquitously ex ex expressed in combination with, with complement, this cause hyperacute uh, xenograft projection, or if you overcome this hyperacute phase, you end up uh, with delayed xenograft rejection, which are, is the major obstacle for successful xenotransplantation. This is how a hyperacutely xenograft looks like, so there is severe damage. Uh, really also, you know, on, not only with hemolysis, really also with, 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 with hemorrhage. If you overcome it, this is an experiment I, I, I did uh, many, many, many years, years ago with uh, certain preconditioning uh, uh, treatment, then you may end up with delayed xenograft rejection, you know, which is, is a kind of, of, of humoral rejection, but it is also always almost always associated with, with uh, thrombotic, thrombotic microangiopathy and clinically with uh, disse uh, disseminated intervascular uh, co coagulation problems. Um, you, you see a lot of antibody disposition in, in, in the heart. So, of course, there are um, uh, many uh, approaches you, you can, can, can use. You can, of course, manipulate the donor or you can manipulate the recipient. That's what we are currently doing in, in allograft transplantation. The manipulation of, of the donor is, 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 is a genetic uh, uh, modification of, 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 of pig hearts, which has been done traditionally by nuclear transfer to, to bring in certain uh, human complement regulatory proteins like the HDEF or, or, or membrane core factor protein. Uh, or membrane inhibitor of, of reactive, reactive lysis. Um, you can, uh, of course, manipulate the recipient. That would be the elimination of pre-existing antibodies. Uh, uh, of, of, of course, you know, if you just plus do plasmapheresis, that will not really, really work because they come always back. That has been nicely uh, uh, described by Dr. Urschel in the previous talk. We can deplete or inhibit uh, complement factors to immunosuppression, or maybe use uh, attempts to induce immunological tolerance. So a major problem in this presensitized patients, and this has been nicely shown by, by, by Dr. Urschel, and it has also been mentioned by, uh, by, 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 by Dr. Schubert, are these pre-existing antibodies. And the problem is that you have not only these antibodies, you can you know, lower the rate, you have always an induced antibody response, elicited antibodies. And I had the chance to, to work uh, with a human, uh, anti-human CD154 monoclonal antibodies. So it's, it's an antibody against the CD40, CD154 pathway, which is uh, considered to be one of the cool stimulatory pathways. And what we showed here for the first time this is really a drug which is completely inhibiting this elicited antibody response and you do not see sensitization. So what we did here, we, we did bone marrow transplantation, but we also did heart transplantation and removed the hearts afterwards and at no time the antibodies came higher back than to the pre-existing level. So this is a nice drug. It has been actually already, this kind of uh, approach has been actually uh, tried in, in, in kidney transplantation clinically. There were problems with, with coagulation uh, 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 problems. 
you know, I think it's, it was related to because they, they used a chimeric antibody. This was already a human anti-human uh, antibody, and we tested it uh, in, in, in baboons and, and it did a lot of assays. We never saw any correlation uh, associations with this. But, you know, I have to mention this pathway because this is really a, an important co uh, 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 component what is currently used in preclinical pre research in xenotransplantation. Then we also looked in xeno heart and xeno kidney transplantation. What, what, what we see, you know, with this co uh, consumptive coagulopathy and, 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 and so on. You, you, uh, uh, first of, uh, of, of, of course, I have to mention, you know, using uh, uh, our, 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 our protocol, you know, using this, this antibody, we were able to, to bring our heterotopically uh, transplanted HDEF picked hearts uh, for a survival for, for up to uh, 139 days. This is still the, the world record in the non-GAL uh, transplanted, uh, transplanted hearts. Uh, and we then looked for all the changes and we saw a lot of differences uh, between kidney and, and, and heart uh, uh, transplants and we wanted to look a little bit closer, so I had the chance to, to develop a cDNA microarray, what you consider a, a gene chip, with all at this, this time known uh, um, factors uh, which are in, in, involved in coagulation uh, in, in, in pigs, and we, we saw here a, a huge uh, difference. So the summary of this is a heart is not a kidney, that this is, uh, is, is simply said, but if you see the attempts in developing transgenic uh, or, or genetically modified uh, uh, organs, uh, the difference between the different organs has not been addressed uh, really so far, but I think that will be important for the future. Briefly, in the hearts, you see more a fibrinolytic uh, pattern, and, and in the kidneys, you see more a prothrombotic pattern. This is important. But then, there was a chance by a genetic modification to, to really have the first gel knockout pigs, pigs not expressing this gel epitope. And my colleague, uh, Kenji Kowaki, went with our protocol uh, in, in Boston, used this, uh, this uh, gel knockout out, 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 out pigs, but you know, he, he was able to, to prolong survival but, uh, you know, achieved uh, 100, was able, able to extend it to 179 days, but uh, not, not, not further. With more modifications, not, not only with this, with this, with this, with this, with this, with this knockout, but, but also with, with, with uh, transgenes of, of complement regulation and also thrombomodeling uh, uh, trans, uh, transgene Trans, trans, transfer, uh, uh, more, more heating was, was able to show, and it was also uh, uh, um, uh, an approach which was based on, on this uh, CD40 uh, blockage uh, uh, pathway. He was able to show that really pig hearts, heterotopically transplanted, can survive for years. So the longest was 940. Five, five, five days, and he also uh, uh, showed that, that this is, is dependent on the treatment of an anti-CD40 antibody. When he stopped it, these animals uh, uh, re re rejected. So this is very important. But this is all heterotropic heart transplantation. The largest transplantation also topically achieved was only uh, uh, 57 days for, for, for several reasons. And last year, you know, this is a long, long work which has been done uh, under uh, the guidance of Professor Reichert uh, in, in, in München. They were working and are working since more than 20 years on this topic. Last year in December, they published in, in Nature really impressive uh, uh, re re results. So they, they, they used uh, 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 a preconditioning uh, and, and treatment uh, protocol, which was also based uh, on, 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 on uh, this um, antibody. 
and uh, uh, had also the same modifications as uh, Mahoudian uh, in, in the pigs, and it's actually the similar uh, protocol. And the problem was they never went over over 30 days. So then they they had to to, to think about what, what 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 to do, and they they changed the preservation uh, 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 concept. So non-ischemic heart perfusion. To, to, uh, to obtain a better heart uh, uh, function. And this is a technique which has been developed by Stick Team from Lund University. This is really a brilliant surgeon. Surgeons can have great ideas. Maybe you, 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 you know the, the Lucas system from, from, uh, from uh, uh, resuscitation. Yeah? It has been invented by him. It is Lucas because it's Lund University cardiac support system. Yeah? It was him. Maybe you heard about ex vivo lung perfusion to, to uh, uh, you know, precondition uh, uh, lungs prior to transplantation and also transplant, uh, you know, uh, organs which has been, you know, maybe rejected. He was, he invented this technique and, uh, and also did the first transplant uh, on, on, on this. So... Uh, you have to expect that this is a good technique if he's developing something. So uh, these are pictures I, I got from him. So it, it, it shows really, you know, these hearts are, are, are perfused, but it's at it's, it's, it's eight, 8 degrees, so they are, 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 are not beating, but, but well preserved. So it's a very sophisticated uh, uh, cocktail uh, containing a lot of components, uh, including cocaine. But this helped really to, to, to have sustained survival for up to, 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 to 70 days. But then when they looked at this, this organ, they, 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 they saw there's there a lot of hypertrophy and, uh, of, of the hearts, and this is, is, a, is an echo of, of such an autotopically uh, uh, transplanted uh, pig hearts. And they, they changed the protocol and uh, 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 applied an mTOR inhibitor uh, to, 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 to prevent uh, hypertrophy and adjusted also the, the, the blood pressure uh, to the normal levels of, 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 of pigs. And they, they went immediately to, uh, to 90 days, so, so, so three, three, three months. Yeah? And, and this was really a, a, a great, uh, great, great achievement. Uh, but they, they went to, 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 to this, this 90 days because it was a limitation given by the, by the authorities in Bavaria. So they had only the permission to go three months and then to euthanize these this pigs. But then in this review process to, to these uh, uh, publications, uh, they, they applied for, for half a year. And immediately the next two experiments, they were able to, to go over uh, uh, a half a year, so uh, 195 days was the longest uh, so far. And, and here you see uh, 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 pictures of, of, of this, you know, a, a really an, a nice, a nice graph function, and then again they had to euthanize them. What I think is, is, is very important and, and very intriguing that they had no signs of, of rejection and they had no signs of uh, thrombotic microangiopathy, which is really uh, the first time ever I've seen such an organ uh, going over three, three, three months without uh, those, those, those changes. So, you know, I had to, the, the, the chance to, to write an editorial on this and, and summarize this a little bit. So the combination of this genetic modification with uh, modified preservation and some adjustments in the recipients, they were able to achieve uh, these, uh, uh, these results. So there's always the discussion about the risk of infection, you know, from a pig uh, to a human. The bottom line for cross-species infection is that, luckily, many infections are species-specific, and the other bottom line is the larger dis the disparity, the lower the risk, because, you know, the MHC environment is also uh, here, here important. And this is one, uh, one example of our experiments we, we, we did uh, year years ago. So it was a kidney transplantation with, with, with really uh, pig CMV in the, in, the, in the kidney 
uh, uh, we, we never found pig CMV uh, in, in the baboon. But there is this other problem with this porcine enterogenous retrovirus, which are present in the genome of, of all pigs. There was discussion in some experiments they showed uh, uh, infection of human cells um, in, in, in vitro, but, but there's a question, is this leading uh, to, to, to a, a disease? As so far, there was no infection after in vivo, uh, um, uh, in, in, any in, in vivo experiments, but with new technologies, with this CRISPR-Cas uh, technology, which has been all, you know, discovered and then developed by, by Professor Emmanuel uh, Charpentier, who she is currently working here in Berlin at the Max Planck Institute for Infectious uh, Biology. You know, with this genome editing uh, technique, um, uh, you know, and, and the good thing is also maybe uh, a Nobel Prize will come to Berlin. Uh, uh, soon uh, again after more uh, a decade. So using this, this, this technique, uh, it was what was really fascinating for me. There, there was a young fellow from China working in Stanford, and he said, you know, how can we get out all these perfs out of the genome of, of a pig? And one year he, uh, he uh, uh, published a, a, a paper and said, you know, the first 12 perfs are eliminated was a science paper. One year later, he published this paper. Well, all, all perfs are out now using this technique. And uh, CRISPR-Cas, you know, is really the technique how now very quickly uh, uh, pig, pigs can be uh, genetically modified. So the, I think, you know, giving the achievements by, by, the, by the Munich group and, uh, and uh, also also, um, uh, the, the, the technologies, uh, you know, um, there, there is really a future for, for, for xenotransplantation now. So consistent uh, data have been achieved in an in a osotropic preclinical model. I think that the, that the targets in, in uh, uh, coagulation and immunology they are now well identified with the genome editing technology CRISPR-Cas. We will be very quickly and more easy be able to, uh, to multiply genetically modify uh, these this, this, this organs. Using this technique, uh, the, the, the risk uh, of perf transmission can already be circumvented. And I think we are now at the point to rethink what would be the circumstances that clinical trials could be started. And I thank you very much for your kind attention.